Good afternoon, book lovers of the internet. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe because for every subscriber, I get a new subscriber and I also read a page from a book of my choice. In today's video, which I am very pleased to announce, is the 100th review of 2024. I am going to be reviewing The Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Lori Gilmore. Now, this is a relatively thick book but it really didn't take me too long to finish it has about 350 pages and i rated it 3.5 out of 5 stars i was very surprised to see that there were so many haters in the goodreads review section i wasn't expecting there to be so much hate personally i enjoyed it and I was not expecting for this to be such a sweet and cozy read, since I usually don't read romance because it's a genre which I find to be disgusting usually, and I've had some horrible experiences with reading romance, but this wasn't bad at all. So even though I don't read a lot of romance, I did have some books I could compare this one to, and I feel as though many of the reviews didn't do this one justice, or perhaps they've read a lot more romance than I have. They described it as maybe too stereotypical, as though there's nothing ingenuous about it, um, that it's boring, and I found myself disagreeing with many of these factors. So there were, of course, moments which made me cringe, considering how emotions in general tend to piss me off due to my rather robotic nature, but Otherwise, I enjoyed the character development of both our protagonists. The main characters are called Logan and Jeannie, as well as that of the side characters who are paid a lot of attention and come across just as authentically as the main characters do. And I have a feeling that they will return in the sequels, which I also look forward to reading. I already have two of them, and there are another two. Um, one which has already been published, another which is yet to be published. So we already have confirmation of five books in the series, which is just fantastic. There are going to be many books for me to purchase and read and review, hoping. I can only hope that the quality remains just the same. So yeah, I could basically just switch my mind off while reading this. I didn't have to think about anything. There was this very cool thing that after every few chapters or so, there was a completely blank page, which made the reading experience go by that much more smoothly. And that is something I appreciate, despite not quite understanding the waste of paper when it comes to publishing the book. But to summarize, basically, it is a book set in a small town called Dream Harbor, H-A-R-B-O-R, -R, without the U, by the way, um, because Goodreads actually underlined it since it's not the UK English. And I have a feeling that the characters that are just side ones in this one will return as main ones in the sequels, which I look forward to reading. And I have a feeling that... Um, some of the characters we've been introduced to in this one are going to return in the second one because a bookshop has already been mentioned and there has already been a spark of love uh, between two of the side characters. So I think that is what the second book will be about. And hopefully we'll get to see more of Logan and Jeannie as well because they seem to be happy, but we're not told much of what happens after um, they fall in love. And having said that they fall in love, it does happen rather quickly, so much so that it comes across as rather unrealistic, maybe too good to be true, but not something that I paid much attention to um, since I wasn't reading this to criticize it heavily. I just wanted something to read quickly and enjoy, basically. So what I enjoyed most about this, in fact, was how fast-paced it is, despite how little conflict and how maturely many situations are tackled. So... Usually, when a book is fast-paced, you would expect there to be a lot of action, a lot going on, a lot of characters. But in this one, that is not the case, and it's still fast-paced. So, the tomfoolery that does form part of the story is used solely to ignite the flame between Logan and Jeannie. So, everything seems to serve a purpose, in a way. And it did eventually get heated, um, but luckily... Only a couple of the chapters were heated in the way you might be thinking about, in the smuth way, which I don't particularly enjoy. And I am glad that there weren't many chapters describing their most intimate moments, since the sexual tension throughout is not what made this enjoyable for me. So what I found to be the reason for me to complete this one 
was Logan's backstory. And many people in the reviews, many critics seem to think that Logan should have just attended therapy, which he never seems to do. Logan is basically this farmer who had his heart broken very severely. He was basically left at the altar. He proposed and he got a no in front of all the people in in Dream Harbor. And that basically stumped him and destroyed any hope that he would ever find love again. And basically the same thing was happening again with Jeannie. He didn't know whether she would leave or whether she would stay, even though she was just developing a new life inside of Dream Harbor and she seems to have settled down there quite well. So yeah, I mean, there is a lot of suspense with regard to whether or not Jeannie would hurt him in the same way. Although with such books, um, it's kind of a given that it's always a happy ending. So I wasn't really surprised um, when it did ultimately work out. So what would have been interesting, what would have probably bumped this up to a four-star rate for me, uh, would have been the mayor superstition being more of a central theme, since I found that to be quite funny, especially when there's a divide between the people of those who believe him and those who think of him as nothing but a bullshitter. I think that created a lot of comic relief and... Um, Usually I don't really care much for superstition, but the way the mayor does it I find to be rather hilarious because it's solely for his own benefit and he says things that will uh, make his life easier and it's blatant, but many people don't seem to understand that. So um, if anything, there are some people who actually believe what he says and take it to heart. So it just adds a level of realism to the story and the level of humanity as well. It makes it that much more enjoyable. I wanted to see more of that and perhaps just a bit less of a focus on Logan and Jeannie um, because I mean I do understand they're the main characters and they're meant to be at the center of the story but too much is too much and yeah I find uh, I found Logan to be a very logical and handy person and I also admire Jeannie for taking responsibility of her aunt's pumpkin spice cafe and making it work I doubt that many people are able to do what Jeannie did and it's not in every story that a person breaks out of the matrix after their boss dies and finds love in a small town whilst running a business. So basically, what Jeannie did here was to uh, escape the matrix in one way and found herself in another one, in another simulation. But in this one, she found love and happiness, which is ultimately what we're all looking for, I suppose. So yeah, I think that is all I had to say about the Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Laurie Gilmore. I do look forward to reading books two and three. Give me just two seconds to show you uh, the rest of my collection. So I have already bought the Cinnamon Bun bookstore, which I will be reading very, very soon. I love the fact that we have a bookstore on the cover. And I originally thought that this was the first book in the series. This one is apparently slightly longer than the first, has about 370 pages, and then I also have the third one, which is apparently the longest one so far. The Christmas Tree Farm looks very cozy, and I look forward to reading this probably in December, and this one has about um, 340 pages, so yeah, not the longest one. I'm not sure if I'll buy the rest just yet, I'll just probably... Uh, wait a while before I buy books four and five. And um, let me know whether you've read these, let me know what you think of them. Um, I'm going to take a look at some reviews just to let you know what I found um, and what I mainly disagree with. So basically, there's Rita who has 706 likes on her review. She says, every day I tell myself not to listen to TikTok reviews, but it doesn't work. And then I waste my time. This was a recommendation from TikTok for me as well, and also from one of the bookstores in my country, but I was not disappointed as Rita was. Then there's also I Hated Everyone But Casper the Cat. That much I do not understand, honestly. I mean, Casper the Cat is amazing, but there are some pretty brilliant characters in there as well, and I found it to be um, a very cozy and enjoyable read. I mean, I rated it 3.5 stars. It had some flaws, of course, but rating it one star just seems unfair to me. Many people seem to be hating on TikTok for the recommendation. I need therapy after this. Um, some people DNF'd it. Um, some people really disliked the writing. I feel as though the writing had good flow, can't really complain, but 
yeah, I mean, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Check out the rest of my content because why not? It's absolutely amazing. If you have any questions with regard to my thoughts on the Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Lori Gilmore, do let me know in the comment section and I will reply to you. And in either case, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one hopefully very, very soon. Bye guys.